making the food. No, he's not down to three. He is not good. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's the Grey Goose, and today's Saturday, which means I get to pick either a mono, four, or five color deck. And there's just been so many good mono color decks out there lately, and one of them that I didn't cover yet for standard is the resurgence of the white weenies that we're seeing. In specific, a version that has quite a few flyers as opposed to ground creatures. So that's why this is our white weenie flyers. Let me break down the deck for you real quick, and then we'll get straight into the gameplay. So for the White Weenie deck, we have obviously a lot of Lord of the Ground creatures, and since this is somewhat of a Flyers version, at least I think it is, we have a majority of our creatures being flying, although we do have some ground-based uh, utility cards. So first up, we have four of our Fairy Guide Mother, one CMC. She also can give one of our ground creatures a boost, and it's a pretty powerful one at that. Not to mention, you can also target that ability, the Gift of the Fae, on another flying creature should you need to to buff up the damage. Giant Killer, four of, one CMC. Uh, Chop Down is just so good against the big scaries in our way, and also he can tap any target creature for one and a white. So that, that comes into play, especially when you consider Mr. Law Rune Enforcer. He is only good for mana cost two or graders. We have four of him. He's a one, two for a one CMC, just to one tap as opposed to the one in a white, but he has that restriction. So if you go up against a bunch of Cauldron Familiars, Law Rune Enforcer really isn't going to be good to get those chump blockers out of the way, whereas your giant killer could. But they're both 1-2, worth noting, so you can attack into them and they they would have to trade unfavorably. Uh, Healer's Hawk, 4 of, just so great. 1-1 one, one Flyer with Lifelink for 1 CMC, just incredible. Hunted Witness, just because of the recursion he has. So he's a 1-1 one, one body, then he's a 1-1 one, one Lifelink body. That's just good in case of board wipes or just a chump blocker that you might need to do once or whatever. Loyal Pegasus, 4 of, 1 CMC for a 2-1 flyer. Pretty good uh, as far as damage goes over time. One of your beaters in a way, but he can't attack or block alone, so you got to remember that. Grateful Apparition, I like this guy, and I might actually take him up to 3 and go one down on the Hanged Executioner, just because I love the ability for two CMC to have a 1-1 one, one Flyer. When they deal their evasive damage to a player or a Planeswalker, you get to proliferate. So now you're thinking, well, where, what are we gonna proliferate? Well, obviously we have four of our Venerated Luxodon in this type of deck. Uh, you can convoke him for five CMC, or you can tap a creature, even if it's casted that turn so you could you could put four fairy guide mothers down on one turn and then as long as you have one white mana down you're able to cast him actually i think you could cast him for all five tap creatures but anyways he's easy to cast overall he looks expensive in a weenie deck but for a four four plus giving plus one plus one counters to your creatures he's awesome Speaking of plus one, plus ones, we have four of Unbreakable Formation. So depending on what type of opponent you're going up against, you may want to keep this instant for your opponent's turn so you gain Indestructible at the right time. Say, for example, against a Fires of Invention deck. You need to hold it for the Deafening Clarions. You need to hold it for the Time Wipes, etc. Uh, if, if your opponent plays like Ritual of Suit, you need to keep this for that. But if it's on your turn, cast it on one of your main phases, ideally the one before combat, you get to put plus one, plus one counters on your dudes, and that's why I like Grateful Apparition between the Venerated and the Unbreakable Formation. Raise the Alarm, that's just a 2CMC instant pop out two dudes, so you obviously want to go wide in this type of deck because of all the buffs, anthem effects you have in a way they're just so good not to mention that you can surprise an opponent who's attacking into you put in two plus one plus one creatures and at their end step for a harder swing the following turn or you could chump block uh kind of an instant speed it's pretty good rally of wings just two of because you do have quite a bit of flyers but not all of them are flyers 
So it's obviously really good for the flyers that you can use in this deck though. Plus two, plus two, and they're untapped, so it's amazing. Hang Executioner, just one of. I actually only have like two or three total of these. Some decks recommend you have put in four of those of these guys, but I don't know. Three CMC for two one one flyers. That's I guess pretty good. To me, it just seems a little bit slow. Uh, the second ability on the Hanged Executioner is kind of decent, though. You can exile him for 4 CMC, very expensive in this deck, to exile target creature. I mean, that's good against, like, um, a cat, obviously, or, like, a Cavalier of Thorns, maybe. Because not only do they have... Uh... <laughs> Not only do they have the ability to bring a card back from the graveyard on top of their deck, but they also have reach. So, I mean, going against a uh, Simic Ramp or Simic Elemental deck, you might really consider this. For lands, in total, we have 19. This is low, but I've seen some go as low as 18, and I don't recommend that. You will be more frustrated than not if you go down to 18. I do have two Castle Ardenvale and 17 planes. I don't know. Maybe you could just, you could probably honestly just do 19 planes. It's very rare that you'll get to cast out a little human dude. But when you do, eh, it's kind of nice. Pop out a chump blocker or just go a little bit extra wide for your anthem effects to swing even harder. For a sideboard here, we have some pretty awesome cards in my opinion. Gideon's Sacrifice. So it's a 1 CMC instant, which is amazing, which says that uh, all the all the damage that you would take on that entire turn to either your face or the permanent you control is instead dealt to the chosen permanent instead. So you could throw all of your damage to your face. An entire, um, say for example, Ember Cleaved Regisar. Well, you just throw it on your Hunted Witness. So that is an incredible sacrifice. Yeah, very good. Uh, two of Devout Decree. There's a lot of big, scary black and red baddies out there. Not to mention you get to exile them, so that's pretty cool. And you can scry one too, find that land you need, or maybe you have enough lands, find a creature. Three of Hushbringer, this is really good. <laughs> but you need to realize Hushbringer, you know, creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. That's good usually, but beware because if you try and venerate a Luxodon while you have one of these out, yeah, let's just say I learned the hard way. But for 2 CMC, 1 2 Flyer with Lifelink, that's pretty good. 4 of Tithe Taker, I'll be honest, I think 4 of is too much here. I just don't really know off the top of my head what I would, I guess, swap out. Maybe more Devout Decree or one more Hushbringer, I don't know. But certain decks, I'm sure this 2 CMC, 2 1 with the Afterlife 1, not to mention uh, op opponent's abilities cast one more to cast on your turn for your opponent. So I, th I think these are just clutch in countery decks. Think uh, a blue heavy deck or Simic Flash in general. You just wanna shove all these guys in as much as possible because you're basically making their whole, their whole, their whole strategy cost one more, which is powerful. Two of Tomic. Uh, Tomic's really strong. Since we're mono white, the, the color cost doesn't matter. The double white, it's just 2 CMC for us. A 2-3 flyer. And I don't really know if his whole lands on the battlefield really is too much of importance in this meta in standard. Okay, white weenies, we're on the draw. Wow. We're going to keep a one land hand because uh, we're going to draw a second one right there off the top. So this is looking like it's looking like Mardu Knights or something. So this blocks a Fervent Champion, not to mention we can start tapping out next turn if he survives. Because he'll be out of his summon sickness. Alright, so he's only got one mana. Um I wanna get bodies on the board actually. Putting the one two down so he can chump block a fervent champion again. Let's see here though, Stormfish Crusader, whatever. Grateful apparition, huh? This seems good. It's 
So he can swing on through. I'm kind of okay with the one card draw because I do need that third land to really get going here. The Grateful Apparition would be nice to get down next turn, plus one more, either the Healing Hawk or the Pegasus, probably the Healer's Hawk, just so we stay out of lethal range for the longest time. Oh boy. Alright, so he's pushing some damage. Good, 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 good. Uh, yeah, this Rally of Wings is so far kind of useless. Do we want to tap something next turn is the question. I guess we just push, right? We just push. Let's go. <laughs> this is a knight, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Man, what a, what a pro. All right. So anyways, he didn't have the, uh... yeah, we'll do that. He didn't have a plus one, plus one counter. This gets us another flyer so we can rally of wings more effectively. Okay, so he has two mana left. How's he going to do this, huh? There's the fervent champion. All right, go for it. Yep, yep. No blocks. Right, so we actually have a pretty decent turn here. We can tap tap for days. The only problem is if he three six, if he decides to Embercleave, well that's still not enough if I tap tap. So we'll do that on his upkeep um so in the meantime we have two mana to spend let's get another flyer and another flyer and then rally of wings is just going to be insane all right so we want him to attack and uh him to attack and i think that's it right yeah okay and then we get to proliferate which is nice submit all three Seems good. And turn. There we go. So, three, six, seven, eight. Yep, this is where we get to tap a doodle do. Tap a doodle do. All right. So, what's he got? I mean, we're down to eight, which is worth noting. But between all these blockers we have on the board, I think we're going to be fine. That's kind of annoying. All right, so he's he's got to push in all the way, right? That only does... Okay, so that is eight damage. Um, How do I have lethal here? I have lethal, I think, in the air, no matter how you look at it. He only has one land left. All right. There we go. And we rally of wings. Oh, I should have done that first, but it doesn't matter. But yeah, you want to you wanna make one of your creatures flying first and then Rally of Wings, but it's kind of thinking and knowing that we had lethal. Devout Decree is just too good not to. Couple Gideon Sacrifice uh, can really be all you need to, to win here too. Law Rune Enforcers are just so good. Hunted with Witness, they're just not quite good enough. Giant Killer is probably the same story. You have to get all the way up to 3 CMC before he gets to be good. Because the Law Rune Enforcer is just a generic mana tap tapped creature. With the Giant Killer, I think it's it's one and a white and tap. And, and so the value you get out of him is actually from killing a four power or tougher creature. We're on the draw with two in hand. I like it. Once again, we'll get our Law Rune Enforcer down first. So he's not aggroing out early. That's good. What kind of name is that? Your Snevsnet Omega. All right. 
Really want that third land though. Really do. Do I just put one down here? One down and then save for a tap? Or do I just start going wide? I think I just start going wide. We, we, we only care about if we go to down to below lethal. But if he plays anything, even a fervent champion here, I can't chump block anymore, which is unfortunate. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So he's really actually gonna start ramping up the damage here. That's really sad, but we have Law Rune Enforcers. We're gonna hopefully get to pump up here too. Yeah, I would have definitely won for one there. This is nice, this is really nice. I think, <sighs> yeah, let's do this. Let's just go wide, right guys? And then we have our unbreakable formation, so that's pretty cool. Equipment, Steel Claw Lance. So he's gonna push by himself again, yep. He's getting good damage in, I'll give him that. Oh, oh, oh. this is so close to letting me double up here. But uh, I think this is fine enough. We, we get to chip in a little bit of damage here and we can get in sacrifice if needed too. Plus we get to Law Rune Enforcer, that's so good. Yes, it is. Um, so yeah, one, two, three, getting some damage in. This is good. All right, so we're tied up. If he wants to go to attack phase, we just tap it up. And then if he wants to do some sort of weird massive damage, I can Gideon sacrifice onto something. Unbreakable formation is gonna be really powerful here though. Hang Executioner are good because it gives you two bodies in the air. That's really the only reason, but three CMC is kind of costly. Okay, so Life Linker. Cool. That was your whole turn. So actually, if he attacks anyways, that's probably good for us. Alright, so he's tapped out. My Law Rune Enforcer untaps. So this Murderous Rider is not going to get some damage through. Uh, no, he is not. And with the Unbreakable Formation, that's pretty OP. We're going to have some big guys down. My turn. Excellent. Sure, whatever. All right. There we go. Next. So who are we attacking with? A 2-2, two, two, a 2-2, two, two, a 2-2, two, two, a 3-2, two, a 2-2. Two, two. Um, we got to hold a couple more back though, right? Because he's gonna, I don't know. So he can block uh, two things, two things. So that's gonna be three, four, five. So we do two, four, six, eight, ten. So we're just a little bit off. We have Gideon Sacrifice though. Look at that, look at that. He's not gonna suspect it one bit, is he? <laughs> He's not going to suspect it one bit. Oh my gosh, look at this. That's so good. So good. Okay. <laughs> Woo. Pass. Yeah. So that was really clutch. All right, guys, we got one more match coming up, but just wanted to invite you, if you're new to the channel, feel free to put any comments down below, like or subscribe. If you're enjoying this random daily deck tech content, I post a video every day, so I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Okay, we're going up against Mr. I Am Not Good. We have an okay turn one, I guess. Turn two would be, I don't know, we just got this one land. Do we risk it, guys? Yeah, we do. Did he mulligan twice? I think he did. Yep. So he's down to five. And I see a green gilded goose. Maybe it's a junt. And there's our land. Sweet. It's kind of lame because we can't really even push because of that stupid goose. Stupid gooses. Stupid geeses. Alright, that's good. 
Uh, so we just want to go as wide as possible at this point, don't we? I could get two down this way. I could also get two down instantly. I think I just need to get out as many as possible. For the unbreakable formation. There's our John to fun. So luckily for us, we don't see a witch's oven. No witch's oven. All right. So I want to make him. Uh, I want to make him start to sweat a little, don't I? Do they have board wipes? They have massacre girl, which would be devastating. I say that we get two out. All right. We can exile target creature with this hang executioner, which is pretty dope. All right, so he's gonna make a food, right? Yep. So it all depends on how much more of the combo he gets in these two cards. What does he get of the combo here, guys? He is effectively six mana. Corvold? That would be scary. That'd be really scary. <laughs> Woo! I mean, Law Rune Enforcer could block him. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, actually, look at that. All right, here we go. Okay, so we just start pushing. Yeah, we do. So he could chump block for a few turns with this cauldron familiar, and he gets to make two food. So I, I don't think he's going to block at all here. I mean, other than the cat. The, the geese he's not going to block with. Two food he gets to make or gets to cast. Uh, that's six six life. Unbreakable formation would not protect against a massacre girl, so it's not worth holding up for any reason. He could uh, draw a pretty clutch casualties of war here, but that would still not do too much against us. And. Yeah, our guys are just going to get so big this next turn. It's a uh, fairy guide mother with unbreakable formation again, and then he might just snap concede. He has locked Wayne available. Oh, that's that's tempting actually. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's more tempting. Then I can double up with the guide mother next turn. So let's do that. Here we go. So this is a lot of damage, but he's still not out. He's got one more turn. Solidly one more turn. Uh, and with with the, the cauldron familiars and the geese, it's easily going to be a, a massive, massy girl if he gets it out. So, okay, he's starting to chump block. I do like that. Keep him one goose alive. I think for that chain reaction for the massacre girl that he is really, really hoping for. <laughs> Woo. All right, look at him go. So he has decided that he wants the lock twain. That's probably the best decision he can make here. Yes, it is. Because one massacre girl and then he's basically wins. Basically wins. All right, that's not a massacre girl and he cannot cast it at this point. But we win. I don't know what, what he could be looking for. Does he have like a, a Ritual of Suit, which he can't even cast now? Cry of the Carnarium wouldn't do it either. Mm -mm. So this is game one, looking pretty good. What are we gonna sideboard though? So, uh, he has two mana, but he doesn't have any food up, so he can't heal any. Yeah. Alright. So let's just go ahead and do this. Put it on our beefiest guy. I guess that. Definitely not that one, right? And too bad that I cannot uh, tap any of these because they're all super cheap. So let's just go. Let's just kill him. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's gotta be lethal, right? No? So he's hanging on by a thread, sure. What's he down to like three? Making the food. No, he's not down to three. He is not good. <laughs> Okay, so do we want Hushbringer? Flying lifelink? Blocks the cat, essentially. Yeah, devout degree. Yeah. So the law rune enforcer, right? Don't need. Giant killer, I think the same. And we go with Tomic. Tomic seems pretty good here. Hunted Witness does not seem good here. Tithe Taker? What about... Is he going to have, like, Ritual of Suit and stuff? Ritual of Suit wouldn't... would Yeah, this wouldn't protect against Ritual. This wouldn't protect against Cry. This wouldn't protect against Massacre Girl. I'm trying to think is what what's not good enough, though. Is Giant Killer going to be good? Maybe. Maybe. I think the Hunted Witness, though, is a no. All right, so we went with a slightly more greedy deck, but also it's it's more effective against what he's bringing to the table here. If he has four Masker Girls main and sideboard, you, you better bet that they're all in now. So we're not going to have as lucky of a time. Speaking of lucky as a time, I think I'm going to keep this because, yeah, we have a 28% chance of drawing a card or drawing a land. So I like that because now it's just going to be value, value, value. This is a 2-1, so that's pretty cool. He can immediately start threatening the goose as soon as I get another attacker to go in. There's the cat, once again, not really seeing the witch's oven yet, which is cool. Hushbringer, that is really cool, actually. In fact, I'm putting it down right now. Woohoo! Go ahead and use your uh, witch's oven on your cat. <laughs> Yes, yes. Plus the lifelink. Ooh, so good. So good. But if he has in his sideboard Legion's End or Ritual of Suit or any of the above, essentially, we're in trouble. Giant Killer won't do this. Won't work. Won't work. Uh, I want to get just bodies on the board, right? Do I do this immediately? Or do I get greedy? I want to have this in the air with the plus one. So I can, right? If I had one more land, it'd be even better, but whatever. Okay. So his thrashing can't do anything. Oh, fuck. No. Oh, shoot. Oh. <laughs> Well, now you kill it after it, it effectively neutered me. All right, whatever. Let's get rid of the kitty catty. Goodbye. Dang, dude. That was that was dumb of me. That was so dumb. Let's go ahead and get him down. Screw it. So we're uh, pushing with all, oh, right? Yeah, just this seems fine. You know what? Why not, right? Who knows? Who knows what he may or may not block these days. Oh man, that was, <laughs> oh, that was rough. Oh, and then he's gonna double Noxious Grasps. Look at that. Who would ever thought you could use a uh, Noxious Grasp on white these days? You just use it on your greens generally, huh? Um. Hmm. That's only three damage. Pretty soon he's gonna be spitting out Oh boy. I don't know, man. This doesn't look good either way, honestly. Doesn't look good. Alright, let's just try and get in all the chip damage we can possible, and then we can Rally of Wings, uh, surprise him one of these days. I don't think it was worth to do it there for the, uh, the killing the Gilded Goose by himself. Yeah, this isn't actually looking good at all for us, is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't think he's gonna match me in damage yet. Ooh. 
Ooh, Healer's Hawk. I do like that. Alright, so I think now I just do this. And then we push all again. Right? And then we're looking at lethal next turn, right? That's that's 4, 7, 10, 11, 12 damage on the board. Or, yeah, and uh, if he leaves a blocker up, I can tap it with Castle Ardenvale. He's afraid. He's only attacking with one. Never mind. He's attacking with both. <laughs> so, so why is he uh, doing this, guys? Why is... Has he got a board wipe here? Is that what I'm waiting to see happen? Okay. Is that still lethal? Let me do some math. He went up to 10, huh? Oh, that's lethal. Yeah, that's lethal. Yep. That's gotta be lethal, fam. Bam! 4, 8, 10. Yeah! Woo! 